Senator Bernie Sanders is planning to meet with Amazon workers in Alabama who are currently fighting to form a union. And the actual CEO of Amazon himself, Dave Clark, decided to take to Twitter to publicly denounce the upcoming meeting. This actually is a thing that happened. He actually thought that this would be a good idea. This guy. Yeah. So he writes, I welcome Senator Sanders to Birmingham and appreciate his push for a progressive workplace. I often say we are the Bernie Sanders of employers, but that's not quite right because we actually deliver a progressive workplace for our constituents. He went there. A $15 an hour minimum wage, health care from day one, career progression, and a safe and inclusive work environment. So if you want to hear about $15 an hour in health care, Senator Sanders will be speaking downtown. But if you would like to make at least $15 an hour and have good health care, Amazon is hiring. Oh, great. That sounds wonderful based on what all of your employees are telling us. Now, he literally attacked Bernie Sanders and implied that you're not effective, but we are. You talk about progressive policies. We actually enact them. Yes, because we all know that Amazon is a beacon of progressivism. And I love how he's bragging about the fact that they pay their workers $15 an hour while not actually acknowledging who it was that pressured them to adopt that policy. Ro Khanna took to Twitter to remind them, saying how ironic to now brag about paying $15 an hour when we know Amazon did that in direct response to Bernie Sanders and my Stop Bezos Act, as Bezos himself suggested in a tweet. Not sure what's more incompetent, your treatment of Alabama workers or your PR. Damn, so Ro Khanna is bringing the fire. And uh, he was one of many of the thousands of folks who decided to dogpile on the Amazon CEO for being shameless enough to put out that tweet. But another representative, Mark Pocan, also decided to weigh in, saying, paying workers $15 an hour doesn't make you a progressive workplace when you union bust and make workers urinate in water bottles. And he is referring to the widely stated fact that Amazon workers are so overworked that they're pressured to pee in water bottles. Because if they don't, then they're not saving time and they could be written up or possibly terminated. Now, Amazon decided to make matters exponentially worse for themselves by responding to Mark Pocan's tweet about their employees peeing in water bottles. They actually sent their PR team to address this. And needless to say, it did not go too well for them. They wrote, you don't really believe the peeing in bottles thing, do you? If that were true, nobody would work for us. The truth is that we have over a million incredible employees around the world who are proud of what they do and have great wages and health care from day one. We hope you can enact policies that get other employers to offer what we already do. So first of all, they use the fact that they pay their workers $15 an hour to thwart off attempts to unionize. They know that if their employees had unions, that they would be getting paid a lot more than $15 an hour, given how much value they produce for the company. Second of all, to address a member of Congress by saying, oh, come on, man, you don't believe that, do you? You must be stupid to believe that our employees are so overworked that they piss in bottles. I mean, they're about to find out real fast what the Streisand effect is. Because if you wanted to bury the fact that your employees piss in bottles... Well, the opposite is now going to happen because uh, photographs of your employees' piss bottles began to quickly circulate. And I've got to ask you, Amazon PR and Dave Clark, when did vitamin water, a product that your company carries, I'm assuming, start offering a piss-colored version of their blueberry pomegranate flavor? I'm just wondering because uh, it looks to me as if this is actual human urine from your employees. And uh, actually, this was confirmed by Vice News that, uh, yeah, this is from an Amazon employee. And they explained why they have to do things like this. Quote, we're pressured to get these routes done before nighttime and having to find a restroom would mean driving an extra 10 minutes off path to find one, an Amazon delivery driver told Motherboard. 10 to 15 minutes to find a bathroom can add up, meaning 20 to 30 minutes there and back altogether. Obviously, we drink a lot of water throughout the day, so this is happening a lot through the drive. They continued, I can tell you that if I drove to find a restroom, that I would be bringing back packages every night and that would eventually mean I would get infractions, which would lead to termination. 
I usually do it in a bottle in the back of the van away from the packages and clean my hands with sanitizer because I understand how gross it is, they continued. I just park off to the side and close the front sliding door. All the guys do it. Another Amazon driver in Florida who pees in coffee cups told Motherboard. The best drivers get overtime, so there's incentive to cut corners. The most productive drivers get rewarded the most hours. Ricky, I wouldn't piss in jugs. I'd stop at a truck stop and piss in a little thing they call a toilet. They don't have time. They're trying to make money. And this is such a common occurrence for Amazon delivery drivers that on the subreddit for Amazon delivery drivers, this is basically a big meme where they talk about how they found piss bottles that the last person who drove the delivery truck left behind or how they had to use a Pringles container for a piss bottle. This is a very widely known fact, and as journalist Ken Klippenstein points out in this Intercept article, they know, they're well aware of the fact that their drivers pee in bottles, and they even had to send out a memo after a bag of human feces was found in a truck, and it was returned to a warehouse. So they're aware of it. So when they respond to a member of Congress by saying, you don't really believe that, do you? You must be stupid to think that our employees are so overworked that they have to pee in bottles. You do not realize what you just did because now more than ever, this is going to be publicized. More people than ever will know about how your employees have to pee in bottles because you overwork them, because you will terminate them possibly if they don't meet their quotas, if they bring back too many packages at the end of the evening. So again, I mentioned the Streisand effect and they just unleashed a world of hurt on themselves. Their PR team did this. So good job, because now more people know about the piss bottles and you just boosted the effort to unionize inadvertently. So congratulations, I guess. By trying to shut down the union, you just managed to expose yourself and make the prospect of unionization much more likely because now people know how much a union is needed. And a lot of folks knew how necessary it was beforehand because you had one of your own workers in a warehouse die because you were too cheap to hire a medical team to conduct COVID testing and screening. So you had a regular worker with no medical training do that, as status quo reports, and this individual was not given the proper PPE and she died. So because your workers are mistreated, because your workers are abused and exploited, that makes unionization a necessity. It makes it essential. So I hope that the workers in Amazon, uh, in Bessemer, uh, actually can unionize because I want this to create a domino effect. All Amazon workers should be unionized because nobody's a robot. No human being should be treated like this.